your anointing, messing up your connection with Jesus. You can't listen to the sermon because you got an app in your life that's grieving the Holy Spirit. But if you really want recovery, if you really desire to do God's will, you got to say nothing between my soul and the Savior. None of this world's elusive dreams. We got to get rid of that app. First of all, friends of mine, we wanna, we're going to rebound from a paralyzed predicament. Got to make a decision. I must desire recovery. I got to get rid of some apps. Huh? Don't hold on to an app that's going to send you to hell. That's rupturing your relationship with Jesus Christ. Get rid of that app. Look at Jamie and say, get rid of that app. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. But secondly, friends of mine, if we're going to re rebound from a paralyzed predicament and get up, secondly, the text teaches us we must learn how to refocus our focus. Oh, God. Man. We must learn how to refocus our focus. I'm in the text here. The Bible says in verse 7, the impotent man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, he says, but while I'm coming, another step it down before me. Ah. Jesus steps up to him. The answer to his problem. And he answers the question with a lame excuse. He says, sir, I got no man. Doesn't that sound like a single lady? <laughs> got, a, got a dead crowd in here. Come on, say amen. <laughs> there ain't no men. Come on, say amen. Come on, y'all laughing here. Come on, say amen. <laughs> he says, sir, I've got no human arm to lean on. Now, let's, 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 let's break this thing down because the man's faith was in the people and the pool. Oh, God, have mercy. <laughs> the man's faith, Dr. Roll, was in the people and the pool. This man, friends of mine, is at the house of Bethesda, meaning the house of mercy, grace, and two outpourings. Miracles took place at the house of grace. I wish I had some help up in here today. Ah, oh, my God, but he's positioned seemingly in the right place, but he's getting the wrong results. Ah, uh, come here, come here, come here, because you, you are positioned seemingly in the church, but you're getting the wrong results. People are lying on you. They're talking about you like a dirty dog. I wish I had some help in here. And you, you are seemingly in the right place, but you're getting the wrong results. See, he's at the house of, the house of, of, of grace and mercy. But the problem is, friends of mine, they are stepping on him and stepping over him. Y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't catch it. I said he's at the house of mercy, <laughs> the house of grace. But they are stepping on him and stepping over him. See, have you ever gone to the house of grace, the ecclesia, the church of God, and the, the, the good old church folk? Stepped on you and they stepped over you. Come on, say amen. See, see, because church folk can be very selfish. They can be spiritual and sanctified one minute and mean as a junkyard dog the next minute. He was being stepped on and he was being stepped over. And I've got some folk that's at the pool. You're injured this morning because somebody stepped on you. But not only did they step on you, they stepped over you. Catch this, catch this, catch this, catch this. The man is upset. He's disappointed because he expected something from a place that he never received. I've come to the realization, friends of mine, never put people above God. I've been in Adventist ministry for over 20 years. I've seen the worst and the best. I've seen elders smile in my face, but talk about me like a dirty dog. 
Come on, say amen. And I've learned on this journey of life that I ought not put people where I place God. I wish I had some help in them. And see the reason why you're hurt and the reason why you're disappointed and the reason why you're bitter because you put that man, you put that pastor, you put that deaconess, you put the usher where God is supposed to be. See, just, just, just follow me here. I'm getting to my point here. See, the problem was the paralytic did not understand that the people at the pool, every last one of them, were just like him. Look at verse 3. I'm, I'm in the text. I don't preach fluff. I'm in the text here. The Bible says, look what the text says in verse 3. I hope y'all like Bible preaching in here. It says, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind halt whither waiting for the moving of the water. Did you catch the description of the folk that were at church? It was the impotent folk. It was the blind, the withered, and the halt. It was people that were just like him. I wish I had some help in him. And see, you got to understand that no matter how holy church folk act, they are just like you. I wish I had some help up in him. They're withered, they're impotent, they're blind, and they're so friends of mine if this brother was going to get up he had to learn how to readjust his focus because sometimes we are paralyzed in life because we looking for people to do what only Jesus can do. I wish I had some help in here. See, nobody can love you like Jesus. Nobody can take care of you like Jesus. Nobody can provide for you like Jesus. I wish I had some help in here. And sometimes God allows disappointment so that he can introduce a divine appointment. I wish I had some help up in here. You're wondering why did God allow the hurt in my life? God allowed disappointment so that he can introduce a, a divine appointment. Is there anybody here that can testify that I thank God for my valleys? I thank God for my mountains because it was by my valleys and it was by my mountains that I learned how to lean on Jesus. Is there anybody here that can testify I thank God for my disappointments? Man is looking at the people, and you're always going to be paralyzed when you look at folk like you, because everybody has saints, sinners with saints' problems. Ah, but he did not know, friends of mine, that even though he was looking around, <laughs> the only thing that he needed to do was to look up. Disappointment was all around him. But the only thing that he had to do was look up. How many of you know when you look up, your focus is readjusted? How many of you know when you look up, you realize that Jesus is right there? The old song says, just when I need him, Jesus is near to comfort and cheer. Just when I need him most. Is there anybody that's thankful that God is our help? That God is our salvation? That God is our source? of strength and when man lets us down the only thing that you've got to do is to look up David said my help comes from the Lord I'm going to look up the Bible says that God is our refuge and our strength and ever present help in the time of trouble the only thing that you've got to do is to look up You got to learn how to stop looking at the people and you got to stop looking at the pool. See, church without Jesus can't save you. Church is good, but if the church don't have the presence of Jesus, it can't do nothing for you. Let me help you out. I'm, I'm moving to my last point here. I remember several years ago, I invited a guest preacher uh, to preach for me. I picked him up from the airport that morning. Him and I, we knew each other quite well. We pastored in a previous conference together. And so, as I was taking him from the airport to my church, he knew one of my former elders that I pastored 
in my previous church. And I was still, Pastor Ramin, paralyzed. Because colored folk can do a job on you if you allow them to. <laughs> Some of y'all can't say amen, just say ouch. And, and so, and so, I was still bruised two years later. So, as we were traversing down I-95 on the way to my church there in, in South Florida, I started to leak on him about how the man treated me for about a whole hour and a half. And, and, and the preacher, he listened to me sympathetically and empathetically. But then he got tired of it. He said, you need to refocus your focus. I wish I had some help in here. And the only thing that he said, Mr. Secretary, he said, listen, next. I said, what you mean next? He said, next. We talked about that for an hour and a half, and now it's time to get on a worthy subject. Come on, say amen. He said, you keep on talking about the same thing, you're going to stay stuck in the same thing. He said, next. And there's somebody, I know life has hurt you, I know people have hurt you and mistreat you, but next. I know that Negro did not treat you well, but next. I know they divorced you, but next. I know they lied on you, but next. I know they mistreated you, but next, look at your neighbor and say next. If you're going to get up, you've got to desire recovery. If you're going to get up, you got to refocus your focus. you got to stop looking at the pool. Stop looking at the people at the pool. Know that they're crippled just now. You need to say next. you got to refocus your focus. But lastly... Jesus his excuse so you don't give Jesus excuses I wish I had some help in here the Bible says in verse a Jesus said unto the man rise take up the bed and walk and the Bible says immediately somebody shout out immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. Now I like that beloved Jesus may appear to be unsympathetic but Jesus was not unsympathetic because when you're the answer to every problem on the face of the earth you don't have to cave into it. Eight years, 455 months. does not have any muscles to get up. Jesus is telling this man to deny For 38 years, been following the devil for 38 years, been mean for 38 years. Jesus is telling this man, full of skin and bones, no muscles, to take up his bed and walk. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is an absurd command. Jesus is telling him again to deny the facts, Dr. Johnson. And to implement faith. Ah, ah. What, what, what Jesus is also saying, beloved brothers and sisters, he's saying that if you want to experience the supernatural, you've got to in ah. what, what, what Jesus is also saying, beloved brothers and sisters, he's saying that if you want to experience the supernatural, you've got to engage in the natural. 
and may I come down here because I'm almost through here because see some of us we want the supernatural but we don't want to do the natural we don't want to obey we don't want to take a step we don't want to sacrifice and Jesus said if you want to experience a miracle you got to do something that you don't want to do and that's what I'm telling somebody today you've got to do what you don't want to do this man, friends of mine, again, his muscles are atrophied. I told you he's been there for 38 years. He's been laying down. Can't you see him? He has no muscle memory. Because medical scientists lets you and I know that it takes an extended period of time to gain muscle strength. But it only takes a short matter of time to lose it. Jesus, my dear sister, elder, is telling this man to get up something he has not done in years and walk. But my brothers and sisters, that's why we need to have faith. Faith is stands for forsaking all. I trust him. I wish I had some help in it. I said faith stands for F, forsaking. A, all. I, tr I trust T, him. And see, friends of mine, if you're going to follow Follow Jesus. You can't listen to the facts. You can't listen to what your mama said. You can't listen to what your daddy said. You can't listen to the demons. You can't listen to your road dogs. You can't listen to your boyfriend. My brothers and sisters, if you're going to follow Jesus, you got to get up. Well, I don't feel like getting up. I'm not ready to get up. But Jesus, when he calls you to do something, he always gives you the power to do it. Can't y'all see this brother? I can see him in my black Negro sanctified imagination. The brother is on the mat. He, he starts to raise up a bit. Jesus is nowhere to be found. He gets up, but then on the word, he stands up. He said, now I got up on the word, and I and walk because when Jesus gives you a word it will not die the Bible says the grass with us and the flowers fade but the word of our God will stand forever the only thing beloved we've got to do is to take a walk and there's somebody up underneath this tent on the perimeters the only thing that you need to do is to get up on the word to stand up Can't y'all see that man? He's walking on the word. You're saying, Pastor, how am I going to pay my bills? You need to walk on the word. Pastor, how am I going to get over this grudge? You need to walk on the word. Pastor, how am I going to get over this addiction? You need to walk on the word. But in order to do that, you've got to download faith in the word of God. This morning, this morning, I want you to listen to me. I was up praying at 4 o'clock this morning for you. Because somebody up underneath this tent, you're just like the paralyzed man. The devil has disabled you. The devil, I want you to listen to the spirit of God this afternoon has handicapped you. The devil has made you an invalid in his kingdom. But Jesus is right by your seat today. He says no matter how long you've been in it and what you are in, with me by your side, you can get up. And the only thing that you've got to do this morning is forget about your facts. Forget about your past. Forget about your sins. And what you need to do is to get up and walk on a word. Your family may not go with you. Don't worry about them. Just walk on a word. Your boyfriend may not go with you. 
Don't worry about it. Download your faith and just walk on the word. The, the boss may say, if you, if you don't work on the Sabbath, I'm going to cut you off. Don't worry about it. My God shall supply and I'm going to walk on the word. Somebody, God is calling you. You're saying, preacher, I'm too messed up. This paralytic man was messed up. But the Bible is calling you and God is calling you to say, get up. It's time for you to be baptized. You need to take a step. And as you take that first step, that second and that third, that fourth, that fifth, that tenth, that eleventh will be easier. Because God never disregards obedience. My brother, my sister, I came here this morning because somebody in here some married couple in here. You've been paralyzed. Some young lady in here. The devil has gotten you thinking that you don't need to make a decision for God. You can wait. If this brother would have waited, he would have never got up. Some of you are waiting for a convenient moment and the Bible says today. Not tomorrow. It says but today. If you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. And let me tell you something. God is calling your name today. He's calling Sally. He's calling Boquisha. He's calling Beyonce. I don't know what your name is. He's calling Bobby. He's calling Bill. He's calling Charles. He's calling Harry. He's calling Henry. God is calling your name. You can't expect God to do anything supernatural for you if you won't obey him. I want everyone standing on your feet, please. And as you're standing, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Because there's someone today that needs to get up. You need to get up. Stop waiting. For everybody's approval, you need to get up. You know what God has lovingly called you to do. See, friends of mine, when it comes to doing stuff for the devil, we gladly do it without thought. We'll smoke weed without thought. We'll smoke reefer without thought. We'll lay down our morals without thought. We don't even question it when it comes to serving the devil. But when it comes to serving God, I just can't do it right now. That's the, that's the devil's lie. I ain't ready. You will never be ready. I told you the other night, you will never be ready for death. But death is coming. So I need some robes, Pastor. Because I came here this afternoon. And I prayed for you this morning. Somebody is lingering in the valley of decision and God is calling you not tomorrow, not next week, but right now. And you need to make a decision. We've got a baptism today. We got a baptism today. This robe has your name on it. You're saying, preacher, I know what I need to do. I know I need to make a decision for Jesus Christ. And I want this robe right here to be mine. My brother, you coming? God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Take this robe right here. I need another robe. I need another robe. I need another robe. It only takes a step. It only takes a step. There's somebody else. I got a robe in my hand and God is calling you. God is calling you. God is saying you need to make this decision. Is there one? Is there one? That needs to say, preacher, I need to make that decision. Would you come forward? Would you come forward unashamedly? Would you come forward unashamedly? Would you come forward unashamedly? I want all this walking in this tent to stop. Please. This is a sacred moment. I don't want us disturbing anybody's decision. If you could please cease. If it's not an emergency, please, please, I beg of you. This is somebody's salvation, beloved. Let's not think about ourselves. There's somebody that needs to make a decision. 
going to pray. And then I'm coming back with this appeal. Father, I've done my best. And that's all that you expect of me. But Father, I'm praying this morning that shackles of deception, fear, indifference, apathy would be broken so that individuals will say yes to Jesus. This man was a believer at the pool. But just because he was a believer, it did not exempt him from traveling down the wrong road. He traveled so far, inspiration tells us that it was due to his bad choices was the reason why he was handicapped. And there's someone here today, Father, they made some bad choices like all of us and they need to make a reversal. So, Father, I pray that you would loose them, bring them to this altar, in the powerful name of Jesus to a God that loves them. Amen. My friends, I'm appealing for someone that needs to take a step towards Jesus. And you need to make that decision to be baptized. I'm going to ask all of our baptismal candidates if you would come forward here. If you would come forward without hesitation. Come forward. Come forward. They need to see you. 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 Come on for it. Coming home, coming home. I wandered far away. Push it a little bit more. 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 We, we want to make room for those who are going to respond to this appeal. They're situated. They are situated. I position them here because if they can make a decision, you can. I got a robe in my hand. I want somebody to come get it from me. I want some man, woman, boy, or girl to come get this robe from me. This is your robe. This is your robe. Would you come get it from me? Would you come get it from me? I want you to stop fighting the Holy Spirit. And I want you to come get it from me, please. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Would you come get this robe from me? You know where your life is with Jesus Christ. Come on, my brother. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can I get another robe? Can I get another robe? Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Coming home. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, my brother. God bless you, man. I want you to come get this robe from me. Would you come get this robe? It only takes a step. The paralytic took a step. And it was easy because he was, God bless you, young man. God bless you. 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 I need another robe. I need another robe. I need another robe. I need another robe. I need another. God bless you. God bless you. There's somebody else. Come on, pray, saints. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. As if this was your son and daughter. I need you to pray. Come on, come on, take it up. Come on. Coming home, coming home, coming home, coming home, coming home. Yes, 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 yes. Coming home, coming home, coming home. That's right. Crawl out the name of Jesus. Come on. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, sweetie. Open wide thine arms of love. Open wide thine. God bless you, brother. God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, come on. 
God bless you, sweetie. God bless your mother. God bless you. God bless you. Here's your robe. Here's your robe. God bless you, sis. God bless you. Let's get us situated. Thank you. There's somebody else. There's somebody else in the name of Jesus. Excuse me, my sister. Come on. Come on. Are you coming? Come on. I'm waiting for you. Jesus is waiting for you. Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? Come on, my friend. It only takes a step. They took a step. You can take a step. God bless you, sweetie. Somebody else. Somebody else. This is your role. It's tailor made for you. Jesus, before he created you, knew you were going to wear this robe. It's for you. 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 Come on. Coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Coming home. I need you to pray, saints. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. Coming home. Coming home. Never more to Rome, never more to Rome. Somebody take the little one. Help her out with the little one, please. I don't want to get her distracted. Help her out with the little one. This is your role. Why don't you come get it? Come get it. Come get it, young lady. Come get it, young man. Come get it, husband. Come get it, wife. Come on, come get this role. I want you to do something for me. That's very important. That's very important. You want to see that person next to you in heaven, don't you? Come on, answer me, please. You want to see that person next to you in heaven. Am I right about it? You want to hold that hand in heaven. You want to see that face in heaven. What would heaven be like if that person next to you didn't make it? But think about it. What would heaven be like if the person seated next to you didn't make it and every time Jesus looked at his nail printed hands he sees that face that did not make it. Quickly my friends I want you to be a disciple and a brother sister keeper. I want you to look at the person please next to you. Please look at the person next to you. This is serious business. This is serious business. Please look, God bless you, my sister. God bless your mother. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, man. God bless you, man. You made the very best decision you could ever make in your life. I'm proud of you. Jesus is proud of you. Yes, 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 yes. I want you to do me a favor. Just, 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 just bring him in closer. Bring him in closer. Bring him in closer to the crowd. I want you to look your neighbor in the eye if you can for me, please. Look them in the eyes lovingly with a compassionate heart. And I want you to look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, I love you with the love of Jesus. I love you so deeply and dearly that heaven won't be the same without your presence. Neighbor, since heaven won't be the same without your presence, and since I love you with all of my heart, I want to know if Jesus came today would you be ready to go back home to be with them? I want you to wait for that answer. Wait till they give you a clear answer. If they said yes, I want you to say praise God. But if they did not answer you, if they said no, what I want you to do, I want you to grab the hand and say, neighbor, since I want to hold this hand in heaven, can we walk down this aisle together? 
What did your neighbor say? What did your neighbor say? Did they look at you like a deer in headlights? Did they not answer you? If they did not, grab them and say, can we walk together? Can you walk with somebody today? Can you walk with somebody today? What did they say? What did they say? Don't let it pass by like it's irrelevant and trivial. It's not. What did they say? Can you grab them by the hand if they did not give you a certain, assured yes and say, can we walk together? There's someone that you know that's seated by you, not too far from you. You know they need to make a decision. There's somebody in your family, somebody you're close with. Can you be a brother, sister, keeper, a disciple and say, listen, can we walk down together? Can we make a decision for Jesus together? Will you walk with that person that you know that needs to make their calling and election sure? Can you walk with them? Can you walk with them? There's somebody in your family, there's a daughter, there's a son, there's a wife, there's a husband that you need to walk with. Come on. Come on. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. 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 I don't know what time it is. I know the hour is late, but come on, please. Would you be bold enough to walk with that person hand to hand? Come on, don't let that person go to hell. Don't let the devil manipulate them and deceive them. Come on. You're proud of their graduation and their academic strides. Why can't you be proud and lead them to Jesus? Come on. There's a, there's, a, there's a young person in here. Parent, your children have been talking to you for a long time about making a decision for Jesus. You, you let them eat Fruit Loops, Frosted Flakes, buy expensive Jordans that break your pocket and put you in great debt. They can make all of those trivial decisions, but when it comes to Jesus, you stand in their way. And my friend, statistics state that if your children don't make a decision by the age of 10 and 11, they will never make a decision for Jesus. Preacher, well, he's too young. Well, let me tell you something here. Samuel was too young. Daniel was too young. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was too long, too young. Your child is not too young to say yes to Jesus. So I'm calling a young person to make a decision for Jesus. God is calling you to be baptized. And you have not, thank you, sir. You have not been baptized as of yet. I want to call you to say yes to Jesus. With the permission of your parents. Do I have a young person in here? Do I have a young person in here? Do I have a young person? I appreciate your patience for standing, but do I have a young person in here? Come on. Please. God bless you. I see, I see somebody coming down. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. God bless you. God bless you, sweetie. God bless you. God bless you, sweetie. I got another robe. Just give me a couple of more minutes. This is what I came here to do. Left my wife and my church to do this, and I'm going to do it. Come on. This is your robe. God is calling you. God is calling you. There is a husband and wife. 
Your wife, your, your, your marriage is in a disarray. You've gone to every bit of therapy. Thank you so much, Ellen. As a husband and a wife, your marriage is in a disarray. You've gone to every bit of counseling, but it's still in a mess. The Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God bless you. And all these things that you need will be added unto you. What is happening, you haven't put God first. And you want to stand as a married couple, husband and wife, and say, listen, we want to make this decision together. Wouldn't it be good for you, husband, for you and your wife to go down? Or for you, your wife, and your children to go down and make it a family affair? Wouldn't it be good for all of y'all to be in heaven? I'm calling a married couple. I'm calling a married couple. You know where your relationship is with God. But you're saying, God, I want to get it back on track. Is there a married couple today that would take your stand for Jesus Christ? Is there a family today that would take your stand for Jesus Christ and say, we've got to go at it all again. That's all right. Come on down. 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 One more time, coming home. Coming home, coming home. Coming home, coming home, coming home, coming home. that we would get our division executive secretary a mic for me, Elder, if you don't mind praying for us, if we would get him a mic. Elder, I want you to lift us up in prayer. There's somebody, as you know, that's in the valley of decision that needs to be prayed across the line. And we need intercession at this time. Pray for us, please, sir. Thank you. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, our God, truly, we have heard your voice. We have felt your presence. Your man servant whom you have chosen for this time, this moment, was obedient to the call. And he has preached his heart out, so to speak. Oh God, we thank you for the way how you have used him today. Not just today, but from the inception of this crusade. You've given to him health. You've given to him wisdom to declare your word. And our hearts have been stirred, have been warmed, but also have been challenged today. Oh God, in response to the message, we thank you for those who responded positively came to the altar, blessed their decision, sealed their decision. May they know that all heaven is pleased with the choice that they have made. There is no better choice than to choose Jesus because he's the one that will remain with us. When things are rough, Jesus does not abandon us. When things are good, he's always with us. And the good news is as we stick with him, we will grow in him and discover more and more the goodness of God. Father, I pray because of the decision of these ones who have come to the altar, 
that somebody still in the valley of indecision will decide before this prayer has ended that they too will come and join these ones. You are in the business of saving your people. You are not desirous of anyone being lost. That's why, Father, you send Jesus to take our place, to die in our stead, so that we might have life and have it more abundantly, not in the future, but at this moment. We thank you, O oh God, for this provision. We thank you for eternal life. And so, God, as the preacher has preached today, let that desire that you have planted in each one of us for that which is godly, let it move beyond desire to action today. That we will step out in faith, download our faith, O oh God, refocus our focus so that we may experience you in a significant way. Father, in these closing moments, even as the Spirit of God is moving in and through these aisles, through the pews, oh God, while you're moving, touch somebody else. Bring somebody else to the cross. Help that person to know with Jesus, he will make it. He's thinking about what will happen if I make this, this, this decision. She's thinking about how will I survive if I make this decision. But oh God, you're calling us just to reach out by faith and accept you. You have made the promise that if we come to you and give you our all, you will take care of every situation. Oh, for grace. Oh, for grace in this moment to trust you more, to lean on you, to take you at your word. Do it, oh God. Do it, oh God. And we'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to ask the congregation to please sit, don't move, and we're going to ask the candidates just to raise your right hand as we do the baptismal vows that will marry you to Jesus today. And if you believe in those vows, just raise your right hand. Is that okay? And we're going to ask all the congregation to raise your right hand as well. Um, come, come stand next to your son as we also commit by taking the vows. We're doing the children's simplified baptismal vows today, and after each vow, we're going to ask you to raise your hand. Is that okay? First question, do you believe in God the Father, in His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit? If you do so, raise your right hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you accept the death of Jesus to pay for your sins? Amen. Do you accept the new heart that Jesus gives you in place of your sinful heart? Amen. Do you believe that Jesus is in heaven as your best friend and that He gives you the Holy Spirit so that you can obey Him? Amen. Do you believe that God gave the Bible as the most important guidebook? Yeah. Amen. And by God living in you, is it your desire to obey the Ten Commandments, which includes the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath? Yeah. Amen. Do you want to help as many people as possible to be ready for the soon second coming of Jesus? Yeah. Amen. Do you believe that God gave special abilities to his people and that the spirit of prophecy is given to his chosen people? Amen. Amen. Today, do you believe and do you want to help God's church with your influence, effort, and for our children and mommy and daddy's money? Amen. Amen. Do you want to take good care of your body because the Holy Spirit lives there now? Amen. Amen. With God's power, is it your desire to obey the basic principles of the Seventh-day Adventist church? And the final two, do you want to be baptized today to show people that you are a Christian? Amen. Amen. And is it your desire today to be a member of the Seventh-day Adventist church? And do you believe that you have a special message to give to the world? Amen. Amen. Over to the executive secretary for our conference to take the vote. You have seen the response of these candidates this afternoon. And is there a motion that we accept them into this church subject to their baptism? It's been moved. Is there a second? All those in favor, please stand. Okay. See, all of them are supporting you. They are supporting you. May God bless you. It is carried. And all those opposed, you can remain seated. It is carried. Okay. Father in heaven, thank you again for what you did here today. 
And thank you for how you moved mightily. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will continue to move in this campaign. May every demon, devil be chased away from this campaign. And may you have victory over the hearts of everyone. As we go now to the baptismal site, may your spirit reign, go ahead of us, send your angels ahead of us to prepare the way. And may we have a wonderful time as we rejoice with these persons who will be baptized today. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say amen. amen. Here are the announcements. We are going to ask our deacons and our deaconesses to escort you to the bus at this time. All of you will go on the bus that has been prepared for you. And we will go straight to the baptismal site. The baptismal site is at Saunders Beach. Saunders Beach. And our deacons are out there preparing the way. So let's just go at this time. Deacons, 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 deaconesses, pastors, straight to the bus. Okay. Yes.